Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>Schwartz here from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Probably because of the clouds, but this is with infrared. That's the clouds going by. And look at this massive light that was there the night Israel crashed. And you know what the worst of it is? Didn't see a thing in the sky except for this beauty. It looks like an asteroid. It looks like something floating there because it was not going by. It's I noticed it, um, a light. So I, by bringing down the exposure, that line that you see there, the cross... In front of it. It looks like a cross. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the supposed cross. It's not a cross, but you know what I mean. Just telling you what I'm seeing. It's light. It's, it's a very strong bar of light, uh, bars of light that are crossing. But why does that happen? Here's a cloud with the infrared camera to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. You know, what birds look like. I'll show you the planes. I'll show you the birds. And it's really easy to compare the difference between flocks of birds, clouds, and UFOs. You'll see it again there. And you see, I just pointed to a star. You see how dim that star was? The star was very dim because um, of the clouds. So here's this planet-sized object almost beside the sun. It's definitely planet-sized. And look at what the sun was doing. It was um, emanating a lot of light. Guys, this was exactly during um, the mass ejection that was the biggest ever seen on the sun. So get this. What if this supposed planet or object beside it, planet size, planetoid, what if it's just um, plasma that was ejected from the sun? We're jumping around here, guys. I'm going to show you some uh, really nicely done photos here. Um, a range. It's like taking old work and making it better. It's been a while. I haven't seen everything I have. Hundreds of jigs, thousands of jigs, guys, and I want to get to it. See the cross? What looks like a cross? Well, look over top. There, there are these objects, there were these objects that were beside the sun. Now, at the same time, NASA was declaring something in lower Earth. There were big objects in the sky. Channels were going crazy. The Nibiru community was uh, asking around, looking around all the channels, and they were just going to town because there was so much that could be seen around the sun. And now, not so much. But these come in spurts, you imagine. You know, these objects come by. So again, either this is a, an asteroid, a big chip of something, or it is maybe a plasma that was ejected. And it's so thick, right? So it's basically the sun, that mass ejection that we saw. Basically, the sun spit out a planet, guys. <laughs> it's not impossible. It's, it, it is not impossible. Really nice with the contrast down here to see it. And I'm even going to show you guys with the clouds going in front of this sucker. You know, it, it's it's real. It was it was definitely, definitely there. So this object was definitely big too. But again, was that from the mass ejection? It was all in the same time, guys. The neutron stars it collided. Whoa, this was crazy news, okay? And this was way before Oumuamua. I'm talking way before uh, it went into Lyra. The sun, again, with a filter that you saw, so you could see the center of the sun, how far the planet was. Here, raw, just the light uh, exposure, um, straight up shot, and you see that spectacular object or two very close to the sun. Now, here's the thing. The sun is vast, so it could be millions of kilometers away. It probably is. But for us to see it beside it, whoa. Okay? Now, look at the clouds, what they're doing. The clouds are going... In front of this object and that's what I I found pretty cool all these little things that you could check out and everyone fl was flipping out and saying all oh, this guy is spitting out planets and no I've never seen one again beside the Sun and unfortunately I even got a polarized lens to be able to go see it with a filter simple filter to bring out the layers that are around it this oh, this one gets me ma uh, mad it was over the moon uh, last summer and it appeared so close, an orb, and then took off. There are things out there, guys, that are unexplainable. Thousands of sightings. 
every year, just here in Canada, okay? Over 1,400 sightings, and maybe I'm wrong, so uh, don't depend on what I said, but there was, there was definitely over 1,000. This is the only sliver, could be big anyways, but far, that I saw leaving the moon the night of the crash. So aside from that, I did not see anything during the night of the crash. I filmed right during the time of the crash too, but then all the clouds, the chemtrails, ruined the evening, absolutely ruined the evening because those clouds formed afterwards. And I'm coming to the understanding that the chemtrails, they'll spray and they'll dissipate. The clouds will spread out, spread out. And then when it gets cold, when it gets later, then we see the clouds form in one second, right in front of our eyes. And I have yet to film it for you because I see it. Analyze and stare at the clouds. It's something amazing in itself. You see the lines going by here, the square objects just beside Copernicus here, always along the Terminator line. Very, um, very sus suspicious. Um, I think I can say that much. Definitely suspicious. And even those dark, bloody areas, they, do they ever look like a dark structure, right? Some of these objects do not always look like the moon. Uh, the surface, sorry. So guys, thanks for being here. Um, a bit late tonight to get the first video up, so I'm back at work getting on it. Uh, I had some errands to do today. Um, thanks again for the ongoing support. For the new subscribers, if you're just arriving, um, thank you very much for connecting and for taking the time to check out the videos. So this is Rupus Recta. Have you guys ever heard of that? It's a linear fault on the moon, that's what they say, in the so southeastern part of Mare Nubium. So the name is Latin for a straight cliff, although it's more commonly called the straight wall. And that's what I heard, um, the name I heard when I, they talked about it. So when the sun illuminates the feature at an oblique angle, they say, about at day eight during the moon's orbit and phase, the Rupus Recta casts a wide shadow that gives it the appearance of a steep cliff. So it must be a steep cliff, right? Um, it has a length of 110 kilometers for you guys want to know and uh, It's said to be almost a thousand feet high Those of you that have been following me for a while uh, Remember the UFOs with the dark shade and the light. It's just um, Lights that were going in and out of the craters, you know, but those UFOs are actually about the same uh, width of, of this wall, Rupus Recta. And that is how um, I was able to get almost an, an exact size of the UFOs that I I'm seeing on the surface. And they're that close to the surface. So if they're going, if they were going really close to this wall, it was the size of that wall, not the length, not 110 kilometers. I'm talking about um, the width of it. So check out that little crater at the end. That's the size, just a bit bigger than the UFOs. So let's get the size of that crater in. Ouch. Those, those are pretty wide UFOs because I'm sure that crater is more than a mile wide. Probably f uh, six, seven miles wide. So the crafts could be that big. Many people ask me about the shift. Do you see the moon shifted? Well, whether it be the moon or Earth that is shifted, yes, I do. And it shows. Um, it's a drastic change during the moon phase. It can happen usually the third day of the phase. After the third or fourth day of the phase, you start seeing the moon um, do a complete rotation of about 15 degrees, and I'm not kidding, 15%, okay, of a spin. So what happens is Aristarchus Crater is on the north side and then Mare uh, Chrysium completely goes down almost to the north. So everything shifts over um, from where I am here, seen to the right. It, and it's, uh, I'm telling you, it's a major shift. Look here. I really wanted to show you guys this object coming out. It looks like a tunnel or pipe. It's coming right out of the Apennine Mountains. So the Apennine Mountains are 12,000 feet under Mount Everest. So that's the height that we're looking at at this massive object. It's incredible. The Radisthenus crater over there along uh, the mountain range. So I keep wanting to say it guys and I'm not saying it. Let's talk about the shift quickly. Okay, I'll give it to you in a nutshell. 
every culture, even in the ancient times, um, they talk about the tilt. That every so many thousands of years, scientists say that there's a tilt, that the moon can completely roll over. Corey Good mentions that there's an equator on Earth, several uh, signs of different equators that have changed places. Very interesting. So as the research goes deeper and deeper, um, more and more the earthquakes are going to come, more and more there's going to be um, a repetitive series of, of different storms. And have you noticed the different anomalies in weather that have come out that we've never heard, heard of before? You would have asked me, um, look at that, going straight into the ground. And there's another one right there. If you would have asked me a couple of years ago what a tsunami was when I was in um, maybe grade three or grade four, grade five, or even grade six, I don't think anyone here had ever heard of that. Uh, cyclones either you know they existed yes but they weren't occurring and now all these strange phenomenons are occurring and it's scary like California um, all the wildfires now it's getting pretty ridiculous and not just that it's that the storms are gonna get worse worse the earthquakes are gonna be horrendous and that's because of the shift so we don't know so that tilt that we're seeing it, it goes, it comes back, it goes, it's, it comes back. It's always done that. We know that. Yes, I'm not going to lie. It's not new that the moon is shifting. But here's the thing. It's the degree that it's shifting. It's the amount it's shifting. It's ridiculous. I've showed you guys, right? I've showed you the moon. We see um, a complete shift of almost 20 degrees, 20% of the moon. That's more than 15%. It, it's literally 20%. And that's pretty drastic. So all the animals dying, Antarctica, the water melting, it's a regular cycle that happens all the time. It's not, I'm not going to say it's not because of the pollution. I don't have the proof of that. But I believe it's not only because of a global warming, maybe not even because of it at all. That water, when it melts, there's a lot of places that are missing water. Well, they won't be missing water anymore. And it'll rise and it'll rise and it'll rise and we'll have to adapt. And yes, probably mountains will come up from the bottom of the oceans and just like written in the Bible. But why was it written? Because scientists knew thousands of years ago that all of this occurred. They saw the signs on earth themselves. They were very advanced and possibly the ancient uh, people were even more advanced than us. I believe the ancients were a very, very probably advanced race. Here's Mare Serenitatis. Look at the mountainous objects beside it, guys. We never see this, right? Beside Mare Serenitatis, it's pretty cool to see it. So, you know, it's not it's not that we're all going to die, right? But um, there's going to be very big pockets of uh, events where probably even, you know, add some meteors coming to Earth with that, you know. I believe we are uh, going to live through it as a race, but uh, not everyone, probably not everyone will depending on, you know, whether we're lucky or not. Uh, sad to think of it that way, but it's it's true. Um, here, do you see that? A bridge, guys. It's in the air, thousands of feet high. We'll be getting in excessively close to the moon this week. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.